I'm not sure if I really need to show anything on the LCD, but I'll leave it alone just to see what happens. It looks like we have no syntactical errors. Okay, there are a couple things that I forgot to mention, and it actually took me a lot of research time to figure these things out, but we need to set the alternate function, the specific alternate function that we'll be using. And you're first going to need to go to the main data sheet for that particular microcontroller. And we're going to scroll down to, well, we don't have to do that. We can find it. alternate functions. So we're looking for registers or for the port A. So we'll look at the port A and we have PA11. Let me see what I have on my... See if it's correct on the alternate functions. So I have PA11. Where is that? Right here. PA11. So I have USART1 CTS and then time one channel four. Let's see. Looks like the AF0 is event out and then the USART 1 CTS and then time 1 CH4. So you want to go to this sheet to determine which alternate function you need. And this is this specific one is AF2. And then you can go back to the reference manual and check to see what code you need for the AF2. And you'll see that there are two registers. There's an AFRL, which is the alternate function low register, and the AFRH, which is the alternate function high register. And these are the pin assignments, 0 through 7 for the low register, and it's 8 through 15 on the high register. So there's 16 pins for each, each port. And we're using pin number 11. So we're gonna to have to select this AFR11. But it's not gonna be as easy as doing that. The AFRH is actually written as AFR, open bracket one, close bracket in programming. So let's check that out and see what we have to put in. I'm disabling the LCD just to make sure this is gonna work correctly. So I disabled the initialize setup display and all the LCD stuff that we have in the program. So let's take a look at using the alternate function. GPIOA. And we need the AFR. And you'll see that a bracket showing an array, the size of the array is two, which is zero and one. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then we're going to use the one, which is the high. We have a couple of options in this. We can use the, um, just using a binary number. And we can, let's go back to the data sheet to see how many zeros we need. So we would need zero, zero, four zeros, four zeros, four zeros, and for AF2, it's one, zero. So we need a one here. So it's gonna be one with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 zeros. So one and then 13 zeros. Okay, or we can do it this way. You have a couple of options here. Actually, the data sheet shows in, in its programming examples doing it in this, in this way. Let me see if I can find that. So in this case, they're looking at the low because they're looking at pin number five. In this case, they're looking at the high and they're using, they're going to pin number nine. But because it's the it starts at zero, they have to subtract it by the number of pins that would be in the low. 
Since this is a little bit more confusing, it's easier just to look at the data sheet on this section here where you're wanting to shift it to the left and you're shifting it for um, one, two, three times four. So you have four positions on each one. So you're multiplying for each pin four times. So let's take a look at how to do that. And we're just going to use the equal here. And we can use the 0B10, or we can use 0X02. And we're going to left shift that number, the 02, which is 10. Again, that is 10. In binary, it would just be 10. In hex, this would be the number 2. And we're shifting it three times. 4, which is also 12. So we're shifting 0 to 12. So if you, if you count from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then it puts a number 2 at that location. I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep the binary just to make it a little bit simpler and, and easier to read. And I also, I'm not using the correct duty cycle register, the CCR register. I need, by me saying number one, I'm, th I'm actually specifying channel one, and I don't want to do that. I want to use channel four. So we're putting that duty cycle, this number on the channel four. And, we, and if you don't do this, it's not going to work at all. And I've Made this, uh, made so many modifications to my program, and not changed that one number. And I was going through this program over and over again. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. But I, I looked at that and I was like, you know, that probably should be channel four. And 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 I wanted to see if it was available, so I just typed it in. And sure enough, I saw four versions of the CCR available and I didn't see that in the data sheet so I went ahead and used it and I got the program to work and this is one of the reasons why it didn't work in the first place so let's go ahead and see if this program works to determine if I'm actually getting a PWM signal I'm putting a multimeter to pin number 44 which is the PA11 and I'm also putting the the negative pole or the ground to the negative rail. So we should be able to get a PWM voltage as per the duty cycle that we specify in the program. So if we have a duty cycle of 50%, we should have a voltage coming out of here approximately at about 3 or 1.5 or thereabouts volt, um, volts. You'll also notice that I changed my ARR value and my CCR values. I used to have it on 200 and 100, but I noticed that I needed a little bit more granularity uh, to get the voltages that I, that I desire. I also changed the prescaler to zero, because so I wanted the fastest uh, possible timing here. So the prescaler is a zero and it's just going at the at the microcontroller clock speed. So let's take a look at the multimeter output. This is a voltage that I got from using the two values of 2000 to 2000. So let's go ahead and change it to 1000 and let's see if we get a half duty cycle. Should be around 1.5 volts. Okay, so 1.6 volts, that looks right because you saw the other voltage was 3.2, so half of that would be 1.6. So let's try a 25% duty cycle. So we got 0.8, that looks really good. So let's see if we increase the ARR value to, let's say, 20,000. Make it a lot larger, and let's make this one 5,000. So we'll get a 25% of 
20,000. Let's see if the number changes to see if more resolution will give us a more accurate number. It didn't change that much. It's, it was 0 0.803, I think. Now it's, eight, it's 0 0.805. So it might have increased a little bit. Let's look at the full 100% and see if that is actually a little bit higher than the previous 3.2 value. No, it's about the same. So I think in this particular case, I'm gonna keep, keep it at a pretty low value, relatively low. But these values are gonna change for your application. So just keep that in mind. So that is a not so brief look at PWM. This is the edge condition. In my next video, I think I'm gonna hook up the ADC to the PWM and we'll change the PWM signal and see if we can, out see if we can get an output on the LCD on what value the ADC is picking up from the PWM. That, that would be essentially like using the microcontroller as a voltage meter, looking at the PWM signal from digital output and then retrieving it through the ADC analog to digital converter. And then we'll put that digital number on the LCD. That scenario, scenario probably wouldn't make any practical sense, but it'll be interesting to, to be able to monitor the pin using the ADC when we're doing PD, PWM experiments. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.